Hello, my name is Jen Robinson and I'm counsel to join Assange on WikiLeaks. I was asked to speak at the Behind the Mask conference on whistleblowing and the importance of this case, but unfortunately due to internet connection issues, I was unable to properly participate. So I've recorded this video for the conference to be able to share. First, I want to congratulate the organisers on an excellent conference and an all women panel, uh, and to pay tribute to the women that I shared this platform with. First being Sulette Dreyfus, who is, has long worked with Julian Assange, uh, and been an advocate not just for him but for whistleblowers across the board. Second, Stefania Marizzi, who is a remarkable investigative journalist who is also a client of mine who has done the most important and impressive work on documenting the human rights abuse uh, that has taken place in Julian's case and documenting this story. It's been a privilege to me to work with her and to help her pursue her freedom of information claims against the British authorities, which have shown us more about the way the cases against Julian Assange and indeed other WikiLeaks journalists, the criminal investigation has progressed. Finally, my colleague uh, Felicity Ruby, who has done incredible work herself editing a compilation book on WikiLeaks, documenting the importance of the WikiLeaks disclosures for Australia. So I, I pay tribute to the women that I share this platform with and the remarkable work they've done in different ways uh, on issues related to Julian Assange's case and about WikiLeaks. I'm going to speak to you today about the importance of Julian's case. I speak a lot about him as an editor, as a journalist, and about the principles and the legal principles involved in his case and the US attempt to prosecute and extradite him. But I think it's really important to remember that he is also a person, a son, a father, a friend, uh, and someone who has spent almost a decade under some form of restrictions on his liberty, now more than two years in a high security prison, because of a US extradition request that has been universally condemned by free speech groups. Because of the COVID pandemic, his conditions within prison have been even more restrictive and isolating than you would ordinarily expect in a high security prison. He hasn't seen his children since last October, and I haven't been able to meet with him in person in prison since last February, when the COVID restrictions first uh, kicked in. It has made his life incredibly difficult, having limited access to his family and his friends, but also in terms of our work as his legal defence counsel. When I talk about Julian's case, I always try to bring it back to the publications for which he is being sought for prosecution. This is a Trump administration indictment, an indictment from an administration that called the press the enemy of the people and one in which, under which, in, in response to which, Julian faces 17 separate charges under the Espionage Act and 175 years in prison for having published truthful information, public interest information, publications for which he's been nominated for journalism awards the world over. These publications relating to those back in 2010 and 2011 include the Afghan war material, the Iraq war material, the Iraq rules of engagement, the Guantanamo files, and of course, the US diplomatic cables. As I mentioned, Julian has won journalism awards the world over for this work. He's won the Martha Gellhorn Prize in the UK, the Amnesty Award for New Media, the Australian equivalent of the Pulitzer Prize, the Walkley Award for most outstanding contribution to journalism, and indeed has been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize each year since 2010. He also won the Sydney Peace Prize, and I want to read to you uh, what the Sydney jury, uh, the Sydney Peace Prize jury, had to say about Julian when he won that award. Assange's work is the Tom Paine Rights of Man and Daniel Ellsberg Pentagon Papers tradition, challenging the old order of power in politics and journalism. Assange has championed people's right to know and has challenged the centuries old tradition that governments are entitled to keep the public in a state of ignorance. In the Payne, Ellsberg and Assange cases, those in power move quickly to silence their critics, even by perverting the course of justice. As Julian has said, and as is the uh, approach that, that he describes of WikiLeaks, the best way to obtain justice is to expose injustice. 
With WikiLeaks, the goal is justice and the method is transparency. And we can see over and over that the publications of WikiLeaks, including the publications for which he now faces prosecution and for which he remains in prison, uh, have been used in human rights accountability efforts the world over. In his extradition hearing last year, our legal team put forward evidence of how the WikiLeaks material have been essential in first in Guantanamo Bay cases and in the litigation run by organisations like Reprieve to try to release those prisoners from Guantanamo. We've heard evidence about how important the WikiLeaks publications were with respect to, for example, drone strikes in Pakistan and changing the public conversation around that in Pakistan and elsewhere, and then also being used by human rights groups in Pakistan in seeking to have prosecuted the CIA officials who were responsible for those extrajudicial killings of Pakistani citizens. In my own work, I have seen the WikiLeaks cables cited in human rights cases around the world and indeed in my own cases. The WikiLeaks cables were cited in the International Court of Justice, for example, in the Chagos Islands case, and also in the challenge by the Chagos Islanders before the UK Supreme Court. As a result of that ruling, WikiLeaks materials were found to be admissible in the British courts as evidence, and no doubt that means that more and more in cases in the UK and around the Commonwealth, we will be seeing WikiLeaks material being cited in cases to hold governments to account for human rights abuse. It's worth making a few comments about the danger of the use of the Espionage Act in Julian's case. As you all know, Julian faces prosecution for these publications in 2010 in the United States, and we have just won our extradition case in January this year. He faces 17 charges under the Espionage Act, and while we were successful in the, in the case in January, in that we achieved the right outcome, but unfortunately uh, for all the wrong reasons, the magistrate in, in the case rejected all of the free speech arguments that we had made, all of the arguments we had made about the public interest of these disclosures, and found on the very narrow grounds that he could not be extradited on the grounds it would be excessive because of the particular medical condition that Julian has, that is that he's been diagnosed with Asperger's, he has long-term depression, and that he is a suicide risk if, if extradited to the United States because of the oppressive prison conditions that he would be held in once he is in the United States. The US is appealing that decision and it will be heard before a High Court judge sometime later this year. But again, it's worth making a few brief comments about the danger of this prosecution and what it means for the press. The Espionage Act has never been used to prosecute a publisher, a journalist, or an editor in the United States. This case is unprecedented. We know that historically the Espionage Act has been used politically by different administrations to threaten media organisations who are reporting on matters that are unsettling and uncomfortable for governments. But there has never been a prosecution. The Obama administration, in fact, chose not to prosecute in Julian's case. We now know that the indictment only came from the Trump administration. And as I said, an administration that called the press the enemy of the people. The New York Times, the Washington Post and other media organisations have all written editorials stating that this is a danger to press freedom, a danger to all journalists. And as James Goodale, the former New York Times counsel, has said, the work of WikiLeaks and the conduct of WikiLeaks in this case is indistinguishable from other mainstream media journalists. That is, that this precedent can and will be used against journalists around the world and in the United States. The Espionage Act is an anachronistic piece of legislation which was implemented and designed to um, deal with espionage. Now, of course, Julian has not been accused of espionage. He has been accused of publishing informa government information to the public. It is a dangerous precedent and one not only dangerous for all American journalists, if this goes ahead, but also for journalists everywhere. The fact that he, his extradition has been stopped as a result of his particular medical condition and particular circumstances, which will not apply to other journalists and editors, means that on the basis of the decision that has been currently given by the British court, any journalist anywhere in the world could face prosecution and extradition to the United States for publishing truthful information about the United States. 
It's also worth noting that there is no public interest defence in the Espionage Act, so it doesn't matter how important this information has been for journalism, for the public's right to know, for human rights accountability, and how it has revealed unlawful conduct by governments. That simply does not play into whether or not there's a defence, because there isn't one. For these reasons, Julian's case is very dangerous. It is why it has been universally condemned by free speech groups, universally condemned by mainstream media organisations in the United States and elsewhere. And media unions and media organisations the world over have joined us in calling the US administration to drop this case. Now that President Biden uh, is in power, we have been calling on the Biden administration to reverse this policy of prosecuting Assange that was adopted by the Trump administration, a dangerous policy it is for all of the media. The Biden administration is in a difficult position. It has a stated policy that they are going to close Guantanamo, and yet they are at the moment prosecuting the person who was responsible for publishing evidence about the injustice of Guantanamo Bay. This is also an administration which has signalled its commitment to free speech. It is also an administration which has declared its policy of withdrawing troops from Afghanistan while it is prosecuting the person who is responsible for publishing evidence about the reality and the horror of that conflict. This stark injustice that is this case could not be clearer. This case has gone on too long. Julian has been under some form of restriction on his liberty for over a decade for publications in respect of which he's been nominated for the Nobel Peace Prize. It's time that this case comes to an end. And I hope that those who are watching and listening uh, will do everything that you can to, to support this case by either donating to the Courage Foundation, which is supporting Julian's legal defence, and to raise it with your local MPs. Thanks very much for having me join.